Hello everyone, I'm Raphael and welcome to my channel, Network Engineer Pro. In this video, we're going to hit the CLI and I'm going to show you how to configure static NAT on a Cisco router. Don't forget to check the description of this video where you're going to find the config that I used so that you can try it in your own lab or maybe even follow along with me. Let's get right into it. All right, so here is the topology that we're going to be using for the static NAT configuration lab. If you look at the area in blue, that's our private enterprise internal network and we have a subnet of 10.10.10.0 slash 24 and we have pc1 and pc2 pc1 has the ip address ending in dot one pc2 has the ip ending in dot two and what we're going to do is we're going to configure on the nat router two static nat mappings for pc1 and we're going to translate them to one of the ip addresses in this 11.11.11.0 block that the isp has given us or the pretend ISP in this case, because this is just a lab. So we have been allocated an 11.11.11.0 slash 29, and, and we'll know when we've completed this task correctly when PC1 and PC2 have successful IP reachability to the DNS server out on the right, which is IP 8.8.8.8. Let's get started. What I want to do first is verify that PC1 and PC2 at this time cannot reach the DNS server. Let's go ahead and verify that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a simple ping, ping 8.8.8.8. It's not looking good. It does not look like I have reachability uh, there. So let me try PC2. Ping 8.8.8.8. Again, there is also no reachability. Now, if that IP address 8.8.8.8 looks familiar, that IP address belongs to Google's public DNS server. So let's go on the NAT router and get started. The first thing that you want to do when it comes to configuring NAT is you need to define the inside and outside interfaces. Now, if we look at the diagram, it's pretty clear that the NAT router has two interfaces and gig zero slash one connects to the inside network, right? That private enterprise network and gig zero zero connects to the outside global internet. So let's go ahead and tell the router that. So I'm going to go to config T and I'm going to say interface gig zero slash one IP NAT. Now all of your NAT configuration is pretty much going to begin with IP NAT. So to make an interface, a NAT inside interface, we're going to say IP NAT inside and interface gig zero zero, which connects to the outside global internet is going to be IP NAT outside. There we go. We've just defined the inside and outside interfaces for this router. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and configure our static one-to-one -one NAT mappings. So our static NAT. And again, we want to translate PC1 to one of the IP addresses from that 11.11.11.0 subnet. And the same thing for PC2. So let's get started. IP NAT. Now we're going to say inside source static. Now, before I continue, I want to show you something because I want you to make sure that you understand what this is doing. So we are configuring NAT by saying IP NAT, and we are translating the source IP address from packets that arrive on the inside interface. So you see why it was important that we define the inside and the outside interface. Cool. IP NAT inside source static. And if we hit question mark here, it's asking us for the inside local IP address. Remember the inside local IP address, that's the IP address on the internal private network prior to translation. So the IP address of PC one. So let's go ahead and answer that. So we know it's 10.10.10.1. If I hit question mark again, it's now asking me to specify the inside global IP address. Remember the inside global IP address is the IP address post NAT. What are you NATting to? And remember, the ISP gave us a public block 11.11.11.0 slash 29. The first available IP address in that subnet is dot one. So let's go ahead and translate PC one's IP of 10.10.10.1 to 11.11.11.1. There we go. We're done with static NAT for PC one. Let's go ahead and hit up arrow and do the same thing for PC two. Again, we are translating the source IP address from packets that arrive on the inside interface. We are doing static NAT. We are changing 10.10.10.2 to, oops, we are changing 10.10.10.2 to 11.11.11.2. Cool, we've just configured our two static NAT mappings. Let's check the NAT translation table. So I'm gonna say show IP NAT translations. Just by configuring static NAT and not generating any traffic, you can see that we have two entries here. 
we have specifically mapped the inside local IP address of PC1, which is 10.10.10.1, to the inside global IP of 11.11.11.1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to PC1, and let's try that ping again. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let me try PC2. Excellent. So PC1 and PC2 have successful IP reachability, right, ping, ICMP, to the DNS server of 8.8.8.8.8. Let's go ahead and check the NAT translation table again. I'm just going to hit up arrow, show IP NAT translations. Okay, cool. We have something here. We can see that after traffic was generated, our inside local IP of 10.10.10.1 was translated to 11.11.11.1. Our outside global IP address, right? So our destination IP was 8.8.8.8. And again, the outside local IP was 8.8.8.8 as well and we are doing source nat so these are going to be the same let's look at the entry for pc2 same exact thing the inside local ip address right that private locally routable inside ip of 10.10.10.2 was translated to 11.11.11.2 the outside global address so that globally routable outside ip is 8.8.8.8 same case for the outside local if you wanted to clear the NAT translation table because you have so many and you just want to clear it, you can say clear IP NAT translations star. And that's going to go ahead and clear the NAT translation table. Another helpful command that I want to show you is going to be show IP NAT statistics. Here you're going to see that the peak translations on this router was four. It occurred nine minutes ago and it's telling us that the total active translations are two and two of them are static. It's also very clear what our outside interface is and what our inside interface is. Here's how many hits we have, 40. How many packets we've translated, 40. And four translations expired. If you wanted to clear this, you can say clear, not cleat, clear IP NAT statistics. And that's gonna go ahead and reset all of these counters. And that's it. Static NAT is really easy to configure. But you can see how adding those one-to-one -one mappings every time something needs to talk from the inside out to the internet, you have to add a static entry. So it's not the most scalable option. That's about it for static NAT configuration. It's uh, not too difficult, right? Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If so, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And you can follow Network Engineer Pro on Facebook. I put all the links down in the description. That's going to be it for now. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.